This is Prince Philip's first car. Good day, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. For the first time on my channel, I'm coming to you from the beautiful island nation of Sri Lanka, and I'm taking you on a journey into the past, an exploration into a glorious reminder of days gone by, but still lovingly preserved for all to enjoy. So let's join Live Ryan standing outside in the blistering tropical humidity to begin this video. And good day, everyone. Welcome back to my video, and I'm coming to you from Sri. Lanka, right here in the capital Colombo. I have a uh, I have a 12-hour transit because I got off a flight from Bangkok, and I'll be here until about 1 a.m. tonight when my flight leaves to uh, Melbourne. So I decided to get a room at the hotel you see behind me at the Gold Face Hotel. Now this hotel is steeped in so much history. Uh, that's the reason why I chose this hotel because I love I absolutely love old hotels like this one. So come along with me and we'll take a walk through it and see what the hotel is like. Let's do this. Welcome to the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Its population sits just above 22 million residents according to the latest census done in 2022. Colombo, where I am now, is the country's capital and unsurprisingly, most populous area with city, urban, and metro population combined coming in at just above 8.6 million. Of late, with all the gloomy news coming out of this country, I thought it was time for me to visit and see it for myself and get a feel of what's really going on. Are all these travel advisories regarding Sri Lanka valid? That's what I'm here to find out. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan. Born and bred in Singapore, my love for food and travel knows no bounds. I can't seem to sit still, leading to my nickname Sharp Backside. So no surprise, I now call Australia home. In this episode today, it's just a small part of a wider travel series which began a week and a half ago in Sydney, Australia. I flew to Seoul, South Korea where I ate myself silly over and over again. My first experience on a bullet train brought me to Busan, where my gastronomical tolerance was tested to the limit. I got into so much trouble at the airport there, I was sent packing in the opposite direction after getting denied boarding. I thankfully made it to Thailand the next day, where my foodie journey continued in both Bangkok and Chiang Mai. This morning, I flew to Colombo where I arrived at 10.30 this morning, but my flight back home to Australia doesn't leave until about 1am. From there, I get on one final long-haul flight to Melbourne, where I sadly conclude this series. If punishing itineraries like this one is down your alley, why not hit the subscribe and bell icon? Don't forget to smash the like, so you'll encourage me to keep producing videos like this one. So here's the thanks because your support is very much appreciated. As we approach Goldface Green, the vicinity where the hotel is located, it's a tranquil waterfront promenade and you know you're going to be in for a treat. Pulling into the hotel's compound, you sometimes almost collide with other motorists, but otherwise, the immediate allure of this grand, beautiful facade is pretty breathtaking. Accompanied by the glittery ocean in the background, an easy, breezy welcome is almost guaranteed. Making sure you step out of your car with wind in your hair looking like a shampoo ad. The famous Sri Lankan hospitality begins immediately once you step out of the car. You're greeted by the doorman and an army of porters ushering you, taking your luggage, asking how's your day. It was all honestly a little overwhelming because I'm not someone who's comfortable with all this attention. But I gotta say, they made me feel like a celebrity. I almost wanted to raise my hand at the imaginary paparazzi flashes to say no photos please. 
I was so overwhelmed, I forgot to ask what the refreshing welcome drink was. It tasted like a ginger, lemongrass, lime zest concoction, which was such a godsend in this morning's blistering heat. Are you curious how much I paid for this day? You'd be very surprised, so make sure you stay tuned till the end to find out. When a porter came to get me, I was informed that the room is ready and that my bags have already been brought up there. Now that's service. I was then left on my own to navigate the long hallways to find my room, but this hotel is very well signposted, so I had no problems at all. I just wished I could have left someone a tip, because that's what you do, right? The reception was a little shocked at the length of my stay. I arrived at the hotel just before 12 p.m. and it took them a while to process the fact that I was checking out at 9 p.m. Until I explained, my visit to Colombo on this transit was all because I wanted to experience this hotel. And that was how they decided to upgrade me to this room. The interior concept in this room is extremely elegantly understated tasteful, and you cannot go wrong with warm creamy white walls and dark timber finishes. This is a heavenly combination. In this storage area under the TV, you'll find a safe and an empty mini fridge. Are mini bars a thing of the past? This isn't the first time I've seen this at a hotel. And finally, my love for tea was satisfied with this and I definitely used it during my time here. We're now heading into the bath area. The marble vanity is absolutely gorgeous against the dark wooden drawers beneath. There isn't much in terms of amenities here, but you can request housekeeping to provide you with creams and moisturizers if you so please. As I'm in the midst of building my own house, my mind was just absorbing all the ideas I could get, including these beautiful light fixtures. Ordinarily, I'm not someone who has a problem with house branded toiletries, but I was really expecting a hotel of this level to have something more than this. That said, these bath items did smell very good, and you'll definitely smell like a spa after your shower. This amazingly huge closet was a lot of space. It's definitely a hark back to the colonial era when travelers stayed here for long periods because it probably took them months to arrive here by ship from England. I really wonder if there are any long-term residents here at this hotel. I can't get over how beautiful this all looks. I spent quite a few hours at this study table getting a bit of work done, trying to stay awake so I could adjust my body clock for tonight's flight. And this is my view out of the window, looking into gold face green and the ocean. It's terribly warm right now, but this area transforms into something else later this evening, and we'll explore that further into the video. This hotel was built in 1864, making it the oldest hotel in Sri Lanka. It is heritage protected, and it has been listed as one of the 1,000 places to see before you die in the book of the same name. Besides being the most famous hotel in Sri Lanka, they're also famous for their exquisite high tea, which is served daily at this open-air restaurant called The Veranda to the Right. Apparently, they also have a curry crab which is to die for. The nightly dinner buffet is also extremely popular and it fills up even on a weekday. But let's keep walking. As we take a ride further down, this is the Fire Beach. It's a bit more laid-back, feel-good, where they serve grilled seafood, sandwiches, and I actually had dinner here later when the weather was a lot cooler. This is the perfect location to lounge and watch the sunset. 
majority of the hotel's facade faces the Indian Ocean. So these numerous El Fresco and open-air restaurants and cafes are guaranteed a constant breeze as you enjoy your meal at whatever time of the day. Watching these rolling waves and listening to the roaring ocean is also terribly relaxing. You can almost fall asleep standing up. As I walked back into the hotel via this courtyard, can you imagine the elaborate parties which would have been thrown here back in the day? Men and women dressed to the nines in their tuxedos and puffy Victorian dresses, ill-prepared for this stifling tropical humidity. I must have been watching too much of The Crown. By now, I'm starving. So I had a choice to eat at the veranda, but the stifling heat was getting too much. So I make my way to the air-conditioned comfort of the Traveler's Lounge for lunch. When in Sri Lanka, do what the Sri Lankans do. And this is how I ended up with this absolutely beautiful looking serve of prawn curry with punchy looking condiments and a papadam. This curry was seriously spicy. And I applaud them for not watering it down for visitors because the best way to enjoy these dishes is the authentic way. I would seriously make my way back here just for this curry. But this lunch did not come cheap. Together with a drink, my bill came up to 4,645 Sri Lankan rupees, which is just under 24 Australian dollars. Ouch! Once I got over the spicy curry, these photos caught my attention, and they are splashed very generously at every imaginable part of the hotel wherever you walk. It's almost like an upscale version of the Hollywood Walk of Fame, because of the historical and iconic nature of this hotel, it has unsurprisingly hosted thousands upon thousands of personalities during its lifetime. Politicians, presidents, prime ministers, kings, queens, prominent members of royal families, actors, film directors, astronauts, the list goes on. And if only these walls could talk, imagine the stories they would tell. This is Prince Philip's first car. Well, he bought this car when he was actually when he was actually stationed here in Sri Lanka. Well, back then it was known as um, Ceylon. Indeed, we're now at the southern end of the hotel called the Regency Wing, which houses a small museum of sorts. Prince Philip was stationed here as a naval officer in 1940 and bought this car for 12 sterling pounds. Interestingly, when he came back to Sri Lanka the second time after this posting, he returned as the Duke of Edinburgh and as husband to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II after her coronation as the Queen of England. This interesting museum also showcases China where the hotel used before, which by now is over 100 years old. Of course, there are even more photos of who stayed here and so on. Remember me mentioning about Gold Face Green earlier on in the video? Back in the day, artillery practice was done there by firing cannonballs. One of these cannons misfired one day and a cannonball crashed into the hotel. Thankfully, no one was injured. And this brings me into my segue about Gold Face Green. We cannot talk about Goldface Hotel without mentioning Goldface Green. Because this hotel was after all named after this strip of real estate gold. So Goldface is an officially designated Oceanside Urban Park which was laid out in 1859. And over time was used for cricket, polo, tennis and rugby matches. These days, it's mainly used by Colombo residents as a means to cool off and enjoy the setting sun. As you can see by now, the environment has radically transformed into this festive atmosphere of kites, picnickers and pushcart vendors. 
The only cash I had was reserved for my taxi driver later tonight to bring me back to the airport. I was now beginning to regret not having some extra with me so I could sample some of these delicious looking snacks. For a country which had for so long only bad gloomy news flowing out, suppose it was nice to witness the residents here taking the time out to enjoy the surroundings. Smiles were flowing easily, and I even had friendly locals curious about me and my GoPro. This relaxing, breezy scenery was definitely a great end to what was an incredibly warm, sultry day. Back at the hotel, I've now settled down for dinner at the Fire Beach. Since I'm headed back home to Australia later tonight, I thought I'd pay a little homage to my adopted homeland and enjoy some fried barramundi and chips to round off an excellent stay at the Gold Face Hotel. Hope I've given this hotel the justice it deserves, because it's definitely an exquisitely gorgeous place to be in. I booked this via Qantas Hotels and paid 157 Australian dollars for a one night stay. And I got six Qantas points for every dollar spent. Would you like to stay here? Or have you been to this hotel before? Whatever it is, I'm eager to hear from you in the comments. Until then, it's time for me to close off this video. So guys, this is the Gold Face Hotel here in Colombo in Sri Lanka. Have you stayed here before? I mean, I think this is such a beautiful hotel and it wasn't too expensive as well. I mean, the price was reasonable for um, a stay of one night, which is why I was um, willing to part with that money, even though I wasn't staying here for the night. Um, I'm just going to be here until about 9 p.m. tonight and then the taxi will come and pick me up to take me back to Colombo International Airport for my flight back to Australia. Yeah, so um, it's pretty reasonable. So what do you think? I mean, have you been to Golf Face Hotel before? And do you want to come and visit this hotel? I mean, are you curious about it? Let me know in the comments. I'm pretty much eager to hear from you what you think. And uh, in the meantime, I've chucked details of my Instagram on your screen right now. So you can hit me up there, uh, so you can follow my travels in real time. And it also gives you an idea of the type of videos that will be coming up on my YouTube channel. Okay, more importantly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. So you know every time when I walk into such an interesting hotel like this. In the meantime, take care all of you and I will see you for my next video. Bye.